Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. In this video we're going to be talking about straight line graphs applied to real life situations. Before we begin the video please remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this style content and drop a comment down below if you have any questions about what I'm talking about here or any other maths related content that you'd like to see me do a video about. So real life straight line graphs this is a very common topic at GCSE. It's an application topic, which means we take the straight line stuff that we've learned before and we apply it to a new and unseen situation. And the easiest way to do that is to apply it to a real life situation. Now, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, the X and the Y variables that we had when we were just learning how to use straight line graphs are now going to be replaced by real life values such as speed and distance. Now, of course, if we're replacing the X and the Y variables and they take on new meaning, it also means that the gradient is going to take on new meaning. So here I've written M going to rate. So a uniform rate is often implied by a straight line graph. Okay, It means the gradient never changes. Therefore, we have a uniform rate going on. And I'll discuss what I mean by that rate in a second. OK, so normally when we're drawing, so let's take a look at our real life example together. Here we have the cost of a phone call. It's a little bit of a dated question, but 10 cents per minute plus 50 cents. So 50 cents is where my phone call initially starts. So even if I've not called at all, OK, maybe 0.1 of a second, I just make the call. That means I've been charged 50 cents and that means that the Y intercept is at 50. OK, and then 10 cents per minute. That means for every minute I go across on the X axis, I'm going up by 10 cents because cents has been plotted on the Y axis and minutes has been plotted on the X axis. So, so that means that my gradient M is going to be, in this case, 10. So C is on my Y axis, M is on my X axis, 10 is my gradient, and I know that my plus C is 50 and therefore I've done the first part of the question I've written down an equation for the total cost. So you can see here that the cost of phoning being 10 cents per minute that is what we would commonly refer to as a rate and that's why I've replaced gradient with the rate uh, 10. Okay so anything with something per something we can interpret that as a rate. The first term is going to be on the y-axis and the second term is always going to be on the x-axis that's how it's phrased okay so let's have a look at the second part of the question so it's asking us what is the total cost for phoning between one minute and 60 minutes so a minimum and a maximum value there so first let's work out the cost of phoning for one minute we're going to do 10 times one plus 50, which is going to be 60 cents. Now we're going to have a go at 60 minutes. So 10 times 60 plus 50 there. Okay, that's 650 cents. That would be the maximum uh, we would be charged. Okay, so here we're going to have a look at a pass paper question. Bernie is filling up a swimming pool and we have a graph that shows the volume of water in the swimming pool on the y-axis and the time it takes to fill the swimming pool up on the x-axis. The question is work out the rate of that the water is flowing into the pool. So we discussed earlier that rate indicates the gradient of the graph. We know it's a constant rate, a constant gradient because it is of course a straight line. That means all we have to do for this question is double check the units and then uh, calculate the final answer. So the volume is given in litres on the V axis or the vertical Y axis and the time is given in hours on the X axis. That means I can just pick two points just like I normally do when I'm calculating a gradient. So this point is zero and 20,000. And let's pick uh, another point where it intersects the graph maybe at uh, this point here, and if we follow this down, we can see that that is about uh, maybe 11 and 60,000. Okay, 
So now using y2 minus y1 and then x2 minus x1, I'm going to be able to calculate the gradient. So 11 minus 0. We work that out to be 3,636. And this is the important part that's easy to get wrong, the units. OK, you can see that it, the units, as the question suggests, must be liters per hour. OK, let's look at one last example together. I've got this question here. Pause the video and give it a read and have a go at it. And I'll go through it now. So we have on our y axis the tree's height. We can see that it must be plotted on the y axis because y corresponds okay, to where the y value normally would be in our y equals mx plus c equation. So I'm going to place that there. And instead of x on the x-axis, I have the value t. I have the variable t this time. So it asks me to first draw a graph between 0 and uh, 10 for the value of t. So I'm just going to do that. So what I'm going to do now for the y-axis is just quickly work out the range that y can take. And let's plot on some of our points in order to draw the graph. Well, we know that the y-intercept is at plus 1. That can be our first point. And we can pick a second point. Let's pick the one furthest right, so t equals 10. OK, and we know that that's going to give us a value of 10. OK, so there's my graph plotted. Let's do part b now. So when the tree is planted, we've worked out that the y-intercept is 1. And that is when the tree is planted, because t equals 0. And for the next half of that question, we want it after 20 months, which is just below two years. So I'd say that looks to be around 2.6 meters tall. For part ii, when the tree is 5.5 meters high, well, that is a y coordinate for us because it's a height. So we're going to come across and coming down, we see that it's meant to be five years. OK, so let's move on to part C. Now, using the graph, we would not be able to work out when the tree is 19 meters tall because we've not plotted our y axis up to 19 meters. We're going to have to use the formula given to us instead. So that is y equals 0.9t plus 1. What we're going to do then is replace one of these variables with the one that we've been given. So the height is 90 meters tall. Let's replace y with that. And what we're going to do now is simply work out this equation, minus 1 from both sides, and then dividing both sides by 0 0.9 gives us t equals 20 years.